I mean, today I'm going to be talking about improving developer collaboration uh, with Code Sandbox. And although it says, my bad, although it says with Code Sandbox, um, the important part is actually the developer collaboration aspect, right? How can we collaborate better, whether you're using Code Sandbox or not, or whether you're using another tool or not, right? Um, but yeah, to get started, I'll just introduce myself a bit. My name is Adewale Ace, like many people call me, um, Abati. Um, I'm from Lagos, like most of us here. I'm currently a senior developer advocate at Code Sandbox, which is a rapid um, online ID for web development where you want to build something, you don't have to like configure your laptop, you don't have to worry about node versions that are installed, you just click a button and you have React, right? You click a button, you have View. You click a button and basically everything is running in your browser. That's what we do at Code Sandbox. I'm also a web engineer uh, and I'm also very big on open source. Uh, I think I started contributing to open source around 2015. Um, so yeah, and there do some pull requests, do some commits. And it's been an exciting journey. I don't know if anyone here has contributed to open source before. Anyone? Oh, awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And I play a lot of video games. So, <laughs> well, yeah. They call me Captain El Punisher. That should scare you. Yes. If it does not scare you, you can challenge me. Um, <laughs> what is going on? Jeez. Yeah. Oh, God. Yes. But the intent of the name is to scare people so that they don't just come at me anyhow. Exactly. So if it's scaring you, mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, so you can follow me on Twitter at ace underscore KYD. I do a lot of tweeting about basketball, video games, and tech here yeah, and there. So yeah, please do that. It seems like this thing is just over. OK. Um, to get started, I'm just going to ask you guys, how do you build stuff, right? Let's say today you have a project in mind that you want to build right now, or you have like a small, let's say you want to have an algorithm problem, right? I want to build something. What is your first approach to this kind of thing? Do you go to your terminal locally and install NPM? Sorry. I don't know why this thing is skipping like this. Okay. Yeah. So does anyone want to like share? Jeez. I'm dead. Sorry. <laughs> does anyone want to share how they build stuff? Anyone? Show of hands. Oh my goodness. Okay, um, so yeah, if, anyone, if nobody wants to share, I'll just give you a few of my assumptions. Um, let's say, for example, you are trying to build out a side project. You go to your terminal, you know, um, create your React app, or you are installing a Nox app and stuff like that, right? And then you spend maybe, you take a one hour break to go install node modules, and you go sleep, wake up, and do other stuff. Normal stuff, we all do it, right? And if it's PHP or Laravel that you do, or Golang, whichever one, you still have to like go through that process of getting your devices ready, right? For you to be able to build stuff. Um, and then let's say something happens along the line, you need help from your friends. The best you can do is to push it to GitHub and send a link to the person. And then the person now has to download the code and then set it up on their laptop. So let's imagine that the error you are currently having is, oh, your node module is different. But then when the person installs it, you say node SAS is missing. Now, two of you have two different problems. <laughs> no problem is solved. That kind of thing happens more often than we like to admit, right? So, but it's a common thing. We want to build stuff. The best thing I can do to you is send you a GitHub repo. Or, like in the early days, I zip it up and send it to you via email. <laughs> and then you open it one way or the other. Right? Has anyone ever done that before? Right? <laughs> I know I've done that too. Or you send it via Dropbox. <laughs> That's crazy. But yeah, so imagine if you don't have to do all of that stuff, right? But a developer today would develop... Sorry mainly on their local host, because that's the way you're comfortable. No internet required. You just open to your stuff, right, your terminal. Or you use version control where you can push either to open source or just to store it on GitHub. Or you are like sharing code through this project repositories, like I've said. Um, or at best, if you don't want to go through all that stuff, you share your screen. Uh, it tells you, oh, open this file, do this file. 
Um, can you see my screen? <laughs> can you hear me? Can you see my screen? Stuff like that, right? It happens a lot, especially when you now give you remote control, like, oh, control my laptop. And then you flick three times, but nothing is happening. Then all the 10 clicks just happen all at once. Like, all of these things are ridiculous. So the solution I would recommend is that, oh my Jesus. OK. I hope, can anyone see the Easter egg here? Anybody? Nobody? OK, we'll see before. I'm watching you. <laughs> Why is it going away? Yes. So what if, guys? What if? Oh, Jesus Christ. I should describe it out. I'm sorry, I pressed for it. One second, guys. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, what if you can get instant help on your project with just a link? Like, oh, I'm having this NPM issue. Take this link, let me check it out. And the person. And the person opens it, and they don't have to install any dependencies. Am I doing something wrong? <laughs> no, I can't, actually. <laughs> I should go on. I slap. Oh, I see. All right. So um, imagine you can just install, share the person the link, and you don't have to install anything. You just get right into it. Um, or imagine right now, if this was a workshop, right? I just tell you guys, oh, I want to build this thing. Take this link and watch me build it live. Nobody has to go through any step. Nobody has to say, oh, I'm using HP. Oh, I'm using Mac. How do I install um, NVM on my Mac? Or how do I install Bash on my Windows, right? Nobody has to worry about that stuff. So like, what if, right? What if? So today, I'm going to be introducing Code Sandbox. Um, and what it does is it allows you to collaborate by default, where I thought it was changing again. <laughs> it allows you to come away by default where it's easy for you to share your project with another person all by using a link. And you guys get the same environment regardless of where you are. Whether you're using your phone browser or you're using your laptop browser or your iPad, like you don't have to install NPM on your iPad. Right? You just open your browser and you have, like, you've gotten started with it, right? No need to do any setup. It's just a single click. Jeez. Um, and also, in some cases, if you still want to use your VS Code environment, for example, um, it's still very connected, right? Everything is still enhancing that collaboration. So imagine you're about to build a world saving project, right? And nobody has to worry about which environment they have in their own device, on their own laptop, right? All they have to do is share the link, and then anyone can contribute from anywhere. Aisha, Jessica, just open your laptop, Windows, Linux, all from a link. But that's just not what I want us to focus on. I want us to think about scenarios where it actually applies to us as individuals. For example, um, does anybody know about advent of code? Anybody? Awesome. So advent of exactly, thank you. Advent of code, I'm also trying out for the first time this year. And basically, advent means things that are like coming at the end of the year, right? From like November ending to end of December. So it's just like a coding challenge that happens at the end of the year. What it does is that it gives you puzzles every day to solve. So imagine a scenario where I'm working on getting this for loop working, and I miss the semicolon, or I miss the comma, right? And I want my colleague at work to help me take a look at it. What would be your default approach to that kind of thing? I commit it to GitHub. I send him the link. He clones it. He checks it, pushes it back, right? But imagine where I can just send you a link. I mean, you don't have to imagine it anymore, because there's code sandbox. But you send this person a link, and then from there, they just look at it exactly how it is on your own device. And they tell you, oh, you have this function missing. Fix it. Like, just like that. Please tell me that's not amazing. <laughs> right? It's very amazing. And I, I totally love working with Code But like, personally, this is not even a marketing whatever. It's, it's something I can relate to personally. Something that I use. And something I'm also trying to get to use better. Right? So uh, the next thing for us is supposed to be a demo. But I did not plan properly for this. I can't share my screen. But I just sent out a tweet on my Twitter. If you have, if you have your laptop here and you want to join, um, the last tweet on my, on my account, that's ace underscore KYD, is a link to a collaborative dashboard that as you are joining, you can literally see what I'm going to be doing on my laptop. So we can just try that if anyone. Are you, is anyone with your laptops? Anyone? Do you have internet? OK. While we are trying to get that going, I don't know if anybody has any particular scenario in their mind where 
they are wondering if collaboration can happen in that scenario. You can ask me and we can talk about it while we are waiting for people to join. Anyone? Sorry. Twitter and do on the ACE on the score KYD. It's the last tweet I just sent out just before this. Question? Hi. I wanted to ask if this had version control in it or does it? One second, please. So that's a very amazing question. Does me building projects on Code Sandbox, is it connected to version control or <laughs> let's say server crash? Is everything gone? Right? So the best part about this is that you can even start a project right from your GitHub account. So let's say, I'm for example, last week I was trying to do front-end mentor. Anybody know front-end mentor here? Yeah? Of course. So I was like, oh, let me try front-end mentor challenges. But what I wanted to do was, I was going to build a Nox, I was going to use a Nox application where for each of the projects, like a link. So I have like a home page and then I just link to each of my projects. So each of those projects, the challenge that you have to build is like a page, right? In, you know how view works. So all I had to do was, from Code Sandbox itself, start a new project, a Code Sandbox Nox project. There's a template, right? And the moment generated all of that for me on my browser, I connected to GitHub and it created a repo automatically for me on GitHub. So I never have to go anywhere else and everything is happening on that spot. So even if I want to share with somebody else, they can, oh, that's changed. They can easily come back to do that for me, right? But just to cover other scenarios. So yeah, uh, once you are using GitHub, for example, you can just import your, either import your GitHub project into Code Sandbox and you have that flexibility or you can even start the project right from your Git sandbox, uh, from Code Sandbox and import to GitHub or anywhere else. And that's not even the last part, right? You can even deploy to Netlify or Vessel all from Code Sandbox there. Sorry. Yeah, there's, you can commit from that. As you're making changes, you can commit. Sorry. Um, essentially, you're saying Code Sandbox can replace Visual Studio Code for development. Um, I don't want to go as far as say replace, but the best part about this integration, right? Sometimes you work together with tools to make things happen, right? Um, Visual Studio Code on its own end has also like tried to solve developer problems as much as possible. And what we've done at Code Sandbox is find a way to integrate Code Sandbox itself with VS Code. So you can connect your VS Code um, ID locally to your Code Sandbox where your products are in sync and you can use stuff. But let's say you're on the go now, you're using another person's laptop, like, oh, they call you at work, for example. You need to change this, and you're using another person's laptop. All you have to do is log into your Code Sandbox account. Your VS Code is not with you, right? Your custom team, your extensions, they're not on that person's laptop. But because you have a browser that is connected to your Code Sandbox account, you can do the exact same things the way you do it, the way it's styled, the compo, everything like that, like you are using your own personal laptop. And I think it's not just about replacing, it's about that, that sorry. It's about that connection and that collaboration between those IDEs, right? And you can use everything seamlessly. So yes. Oh, I see people here. I, I sincerely apologize. I would have loved to like, show this on the screen, but I did not tell them ahead of time that I was going to do a demo. But for, if you can show, just like signify, if you are connected, I see three people here. OK. I don't know if anyone out here that wants to take a look and also just check out. Um, right now, there's an error on the screen. And if you click on my name, that's the first picture, you can literally see what I'm doing, right? Right on the go. Can anyone see that? Let me, let me do that again. So one of the, my favorite use cases that I'm planning to even use this kind of thing for is, imagine we're having a class here, or you know, just teaching people, right? And you know how talks normally go, you have screenshots on your, on your slides, or you have live demo where everybody's just watching you type on the screen. But now imagine if the person can scroll while they are watching you type. You are building stuff and you can learn from it, right? So there's all this integration where, depending on your own individual use case, the possibilities are like limitless. You just have to find a way that I am able to code regardless of my device, regardless of where I am, regardless of my browser, and still be able to build interesting stuff, right? And collaborate with anybody, anywhere. My favorite use case for this is when I'm building something and I need help, right? Someone to help me fix my bug. I just need to send you a link and you can give it a look as easily as possible. So um, let me see. I sincerely apologize for not having presentation for this part, but I hope I've been able to, I don't know, convince or show you guys what is possible. Have I been able to do that? Oh, awesome. Thank you. So I don't know if anyone has any other question for us to wrap up. Hello. Okay, how does Code Sandbox compare to Code Spaces, GitHub Code Spaces? 
So um, I've only used code spaces like maybe once. That's GitHub code spaces, right? I think I've only used it maybe like once or twice. But one of the best things about Code Sandbox is that for most of these tools, either CodePen, StackBase, like most of them, are very focused on what you can do on the front end, like CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. Everything happens on the front end. But when you have to build an application that can be server-side um, rendered, like Nox, for example, where you have to use your terminals, you have to do this, there's no support for that in other spaces, at least that I'm aware of. So what Cosambos gives you is that there's flexibility for any kind of JavaScript project that you want to build. You're not literally limited to just doing front-end, like CSS or very presentation-focused stuff. You can literally build anything that you want um, and provide using different templates that you can provide for it. So that, that's, that's how it works. Thank you. Any other questions? OK. Um, I think if there are no other questions, I feel like we've gotten to the end of this. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for paying attention and listening to my rant. You can. Thank you. You can check out Code Sandbox on your own time, on the URL, CD, like you know, the stuff that I can do for you. And you can also join our Discord. Um, we're trying to talk to people that are building web stuff generally, right? One of my favorite things about joining Code Sandbox is I get, to be, I get to be in the middle of people building interesting stuff. It's not about what I can build anymore. It's about what I can see you build, what I can see you build, and just like experiencing all of that together with you. And I feel like it's amazing. So I would definitely love to see what you guys build. You can always reach out to me, DM me, mention me anywhere. Um, so yeah, it's been my pleasure talking to you guys. Thank you very much.